All right, great. Thanks, everybody. Um, well, obviously, the relationship between higher education and artificial intelligence is, is an extremely complex one. It's evolving every minute. In fact, it'll be evolving in the next 10 minutes while I'm talking to you. So I can't possibly talk about all the things I'd love to talk about, including some of the very interesting conversations that are happening in the chat bar right now. Um, a couple of the things that I would have loved to have chatted about is the extent to which universities are nurturing critical literacies, because we need them now more than ever in an era of fake news, misinformation and potential AI hallucination. Um, I'm also passionate about the extent to which universities as public good institutions are actually leading or actively participating in deliberations about the social and environmental consequences of artificial intelligence. But to keep to my allotted time, I'm going to restrict myself to discussing just one issue. And that is the argument that pertains to the purpose of higher education. And in particular, I'm going to be looking at the um, implications of AI for the undergraduate curriculum. For many people, higher education is about credentialing someone for employment. You pay your fees or you make sure your fees get paid for you. You attend your classes, you submit your assignments, you write your exams. And when you've successfully completed all of the requisite tasks, then we give you the piece of paper that indicates as much. Given the enormous economic inequalities in our society, I think it's very logical that for many of our students, this is the dominant understanding of what a higher education is all about. A university qualification holds the promise of meaningful employment that could potentially lift the student and even their whole family out of poverty. But this instrumentalist understanding of a higher education as being related entirely to the economic benefits brings enormous negative consequences for how we do things within the university. And in this understanding of higher education, artificial intelligence can topple the entire house of cards. If artificial intelligence can more speedily and efficiently complete all the tasks that we set for students. And if the role of the university is simply to verify the completion of these tasks, well, then the entire currency of the university qualification collapses. So I think it's hardly surprising that many universities are responding to ChatGPT as an existential threat and are rushing to purchase AI programs that can identify when students have used AI programs. As with the police catch punish approach that universities have used for many years, decades, in regards plagiarism, we will no doubt see dire threats of exclusion for students who use artificial intelligence to complete their work. And then if the AI surveillance software indicates that the student might have used AI software in their own work, then the students will be made to pay the price for this misdeed. This is the playbook that's already in place in our universities and which universities are now ratcheting up to address the rise of large language modeling. It just tells me that my battery is about to die. <laughs> Um, because if a university is selling a product, then AR and AR offers a knockoff version that is quicker and cheaper, well, then the product that we're selling very rapidly loses its value. But, of course, these instrumentalist explanations are not the purpose of a higher education. A higher education is not a product. Knowledge is not a commodity. And while universities serve a great many purposes and credentialing uh, people for the workplace is a subsidiary and minor aspect of what we are or should be all about. Because when economic drivers of higher education dominate, then the educational ones will always, without exception, be sidelined. So then, what is a university education for? 
Well, a great many philosophers and researchers have tackled this question before me, but the definition that pleases me most for its succinctness and its expansive meaning is Paul Ashwin's look at what an undergraduate qualification is for, and he says as follows. A higher education entails students being transformed by the knowledge they are studying and thereby changing their understanding of themselves and their place in the world. This is about so much more than the completion of a series of tasks or the development of generic skills or the gaining of information, though it might include all of these things. As my colleague Mags Blackie indicates, for example, to enjoy a transformative knowledge a relationship with chemistry, to become an expert knower in chemistry, if you like, is to be able to understand the world at a molecular level. And I think there's something very beautiful in that definition. Or to draw another example, again, from Paul Ashwin, he describes becoming a sociologist, and he suggests that a lot of students study sociology simply because they're interested in contemporary social issues. But as they begin to enjoy this transformative relationship, um, they can even have a sense of loss as they realize that they are integral to and even benefit from the social systems that they are learning how to critique. So the point is that in all cases, a higher education is about transformation as students take on the powerful knowledge of the fields. And to quote Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. So as students are transformed in how they come to understand the fields that they're studying, understand aspects of the world, so they also come to take on the responsibilities of critical citizenship. This is not to suggest that universities should disregard the future employment of their graduates or neglect to connect the powerful knowledge of the academy with the powerful knowledge available in other social spaces. Rather, it is to argue that we need to place the educational purposes of a higher education front and foremost in every conversation we have with each other as academics and with our students. At this point, some of you are probably thinking that I've forgotten that this is a colloquium about artificial intelligence. So let me return to that. If the, high, if the undergraduate curriculum is, first and foremost, about nurturing a transformative relationship with knowledge and one sense of being in the world, where might artificial intelligence fit in? In this understanding of higher education, AI now becomes a potential tool to be used to foster such transformative relationships. And we would, of course, also need to ask questions about how AI might constrain or corrupt such transformative relationships. And we need to engage our students explicitly in conversations about such enablements and constraints. Certainly, AI requires that we rethink both the form and the function of assessment. If we are educating students towards a transformative relationship with a body of knowledge, what assessments will nourish that? We'll need to reflect deeply on why we are assessing, and Jonathan referred to this earlier. And if AI can easily perform the task that we're asking students to do, then we need to reflect on whether students should indeed bother learning about how to perform the task for themselves at all. Don't get me wrong. I think that there will be cases where we still want to equip students to perform tasks that AI can already do for them. Perhaps, for example, we might want chemists to understand by heart the nature and meaning of the periodic table, or we might want sociologists to be able to draw on multiple texts to establish their own position. And if so, well, then we need to equip students and assess them on these. But with this understanding, we shift from the question of how will we catch students using artificial intelligence so that we can punish them to asking how does this assessment build students' relationship to knowledge and how might artificial intelligence enable or constrain this? As it stands, the dominant account of higher education as the transfer of a commodity from a service provider um, to a customer is completely doomed by AI. And quite frankly, good riddance. But thinking about the purpose of higher education as transformative will entail a lot of winning over of hearts and minds of both our students and our colleagues. 
because there is so much investment in the narrow technicist account of higher education in our universities and in how the public discusses the purpose of a higher education. So it's not going to go down without a fight, albeit an entirely time and resource wasting fight. And so in the next few years, we will no doubt see more and more surveillance of our students, and we'll see many universities taking quite a while before they actually start engaging with what a university curriculum focused on enabling a transformative relationship to knowledge in the era of AI actually looks like. But thankfully, in every university, there are already pockets of passionate people who are engaged with such attempts. You're going to find in every university academics who already debate with their students what a university education is for. These academics ignite in their students a desire for access to powerful knowledge that way outstrips the value of any piece of paper that we can provide to them. And these academics are asking how best to respond to AI using an approach that helps to build trust, belonging, and transformative relationships rather than mistrust and suspicion. Thank you.